Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Echo Simpson. If this is your first time of checking out my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. Do you know one thing? It is 6.55 a.m. right now in Winneba, but I think Winneba people don't wake up early. I don't know whether it's because of the festival or that is their lifestyle, but it's 6, almost 7 o'clock, and you can see the road is still quiet, just one or two people walking around. I don't know why, but hey, I want to say a very big happy Mother's Day to everybody who is watching me right now. All the mothers who are supporting my YouTube channel, I can't mention names because there are thousands of you. With my almost 17,000 subscribers, I know most of you will be women. And I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of you. If you're a man and then you are following me on this YouTube channel and you are performing the duty of a mother due to whatever circumstances, then I want to say happy Mother's Day to you as well. Today is 8, it's a Sunday, 8 May 2022, and we are already up trying to give you a little review of me staying in Winneba for the festival for three days. Let's go. A call Simpson, connecting Africans in the diaspora to the motherland. up in Winneba is like a dream come true because back in the days you know when we were in school uh, during the social studies lesson uh, we, we were taught about festivals and the people that celebrate those festivals I remember Homo War celebrated by the people of the Gans, uh, Hogbetutu celebrated by the people of the Ewe, Ugoafetu Afashe which is my festival by the Fantis and then Abuacho festival celebrated by the people of Winneba or Simpa in the Efutu municipality. It's always fascinating to hear stories like the Abuacho, you know, the, the rituals that the people do before the whole celebration where uh, the Asafu companies are sent into the forest to go and hunt for a deer. So if you check on my previous video, you realize that I've made a video with a title um, Deer Hunting Rituals by the people of a photo or winning but so learning in those books i always wanted to you know be part of such a celebration and 2022 now i've gotten the experience with the whole abuacho festival and i think that is what we're going to do this year we're going to go around central region and then give you relevant content concerning the history and then the festival celebrated by the people of central region yes so i told you that i was going to give you a review of my three day stay in Winneba to celebrate the Abuache festival and also get the experience about the lifestyle of the people. Now, in my review, what brought me here? First of all, I'm gonna talk about what really brought me here, which is the festival. And when we're talking about the festival, then definitely we are talking about tourism. Moving around Winneba, I could realize that there is a definite and a concise effort a deliberate effort from the people of Winneba to project tourism. Why am I saying that? Moving around from the Winneba roundabout, I saw this nice monument that is being unveiled over there. It has Kwame Nkrumah and one of the leaders, you know, then times when it comes to politics. Now, that alone speaks a lot about Winneba. I mean, everybody hears about the Winneba Junction because when you're coming from Accra to Cape Coast, there's no other way than to use the Winneba Junction. So that alone is a tourist attraction for people to come and see. I mean, I saw it on TV, on the internet, but when I got here, it was so beautiful with a fountain and everything, with the water sprouting out from the ground and all that. It was so beautiful. Now, getting closer into the community or into the town, I realized there was another monument, which is called the Unity Square. On the Unity Square, there's a monument of three people holding on to a long pole, I think with a flag on it. And that signifies that not only one person is governing or controlling or managing the affairs of the community. It's so beautiful. So anytime you come here, make sure you walk around to that spot, Unity Square, and have a feel of it. Now getting into the mainland, we found this beautiful place called Osimpa Heritage Center. And when you get inside, 
it's like a restaurant, but when you get to the upper part of the building, it is showcasing the olden days, how culturally they used to celebrate their festival. And the images on the walls are so beautiful that you wouldn't miss it when you come to Guinea, you definitely have to go there. Aside that, there are also three or four men who are holding on to a deer on top of the building with one big man having talisman. Talisman in our language or in our culture is only worn by someone who is very powerful and strong and relevant to the society when it comes to defending and putting up security for the community. And also, I've realized that Winneba is kind of separated into two. Those downtown and those up there in a semi-city. <laughs> yes. So when you get close to those downtown where you have a lot of fishermen or fisher folks around, when you get there, you, you have a feel that this place is the old town of Winneba. And when you get there, there's also a huge monument. Here in the central region of Ghana, the communities along the beaches are fishermen. So there you would also find a statue of the Ghana's most celebrated fisherman, Frenyu Kweja, mounted over there. You realize that in my other videos, you would see that Mori has also unveiled one of the monuments representing Frenyu Kweja. So these are my reviews when it comes to tourism. Let's move on. Another thing that I also talk about is the cost of living in Winneba. I think it's kind of high. It's, it's, it's a little bit expensive uh, when it comes to the cost of living. Because the first day that we came, we wanted to get food. And then we bought uh, gakinke and then fish. And surprisingly, we bought fried fish for 20 Ghana CDs, which to us is a little bit expensive. Why is it expensive? Because, um, like I said, Winneba is a fishing community. So if the main occupation is for the brothers and sisters here to go onto the sea and catch fish in abundance, then fish prices should be a little bit less. But then we went through town and the idea about food is that it's a little bit expensive. We had to buy that small fish like this for 20 CDs. And after speaking to some of the citizens here, I realized that this can be the cause of the presence of the students here. There's a big university here in Winneba that, you know, educate people into becoming educators, like uh, teachers and educational managers and all that. So it brings a lot of people here. I can guess about 5,000 students in that university. So that they are living here really affects the living of the local people here. Because they are students, they would have to purchase things one way or the other. And due to that, the system has really affected the normal people who are staying here accommodation wise you know students when they come they would love to be in the hostels and all that so we have a lot of people building their own private hostels for these people and the prices things are changing here the prices for these students goes a little bit up and that is affecting the local person living here so cost of living in Winneba, i would say it's a little bit expensive because even the fish that I'm talking to you about, we went elsewhere to buy uh, fried rice and I think chicken. And the price that we were given is kind of like abnormal. I wouldn't say it's abnormal, but um, it's a little bit expensive for the local people. I may be able to afford it because I understand, you know, traveling around and purchasing what I have to purchase because I need it for my well-being. But what about the local person who is struggling to feed himself? Mm -hmm. Have you realized the oncoming cars? Yes, I am facing the oncoming cars because I am not expected to think that there is a car that is going to come behind me. So that is one thing that you've realized about Winneba when you come here. Most of the road signs or most of the roads are one-way roads. You barely find road that has two cars coming the other way. So that is one beautiful thing that I think I love about Winneba. And this prevents a lot of you know head-to-head -head collision and accident so one beautiful thing that i'll say is that their road is really really tired but just that most of them are just one-way roads one interesting thing about winneba is the people 
I always look out for the people anytime I travel. How is the lifestyle? What do they really do? What is their connection or their relationship with visitors? To be very honest with you, Winneba is a welcoming city. Yes, I never experienced any, any, any grudge, any fight, anything, you know, which is not really, really, really good for the community or for Winneba. When we came in, we met a lot of people by the roadside. We met a lot of people whilst we were buying. We met a lot of people at the hotel that we were. Even the security man, he was so nice that at the end of the day, he said, hey, when you guys are going out, I think we have to go together. So we sent him out in the evening night life. It was beautiful. We had a lot of fun. So the lifestyle of the people really depict their culture and vice versa. The people are welcoming, like I said. If you need help, if you need support in anything, they are willing to assist you. Not only money-wise, but sharing ideas with you and showing you the direction. Like I said earlier on, most of the roads here are one way. So at some point, we miss the roads. And none of them were like, hey, it's one way, it's one way. No, they came to us quietly and said, oh, my brother, you know, this place is a one way, so you don't have to pass here. You have to turn around. And that was so nice. And then another thing is, whilst I was moving from the hotel to the Deba ground, my car fell into a ditch. So then I wasn't able to move. And unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, I didn't really call anybody, but these strong guys came around and said, hey, you are in trouble, right? Let us help you. So they helped me, you know, raise the car, put it somewhere else. And then I was able to do my thing to get you the content that I'm giving you right now. Hey, Friday when we got here, me and my team got wasted. Uh, we woke up sun, uh, Saturday morning with crazy hangover. Yes, I mean, we all drink. Because it's a festival, people will love to drink. And nightlife in Winneba, if you're just like me and my team that likes to chill, have fun, dance, drink, eat, do whatever we have to do in the evening after the work is done, then definitely this place is for you. We go here on Friday and then we ask the people, hey, where can we hang out tonight? And some were saying Sir Charles. So we went to check out Sir Charles. It's a beach joint. Uh, we went there. We started with a whole vibe because, you know, when you get to the city, you need to taste the drinks. Even though we all have a common drink, which is like the beer, the Guinness and all that, but we needed to have a feel of how to get drunk here. So me and my guys started drinking. And then we were also told about kings and queens. Yeah, so after checking out all these places, we decided to land on kings and queens. And I tell you, kings and queens was mad fun. You know, so nightlife in Winneba. I wouldn't say we had influx of people coming because of the festival, but I think naturally the people love to have fun because all these people that we met there were people that are already living here in the city of Winneba. So nightlife, you have a lot of options as to where to go. You may want to have those playing the live band. When you go to Cape Coast, there are places specifically for live band. Here in Winneba, we have a place like that. For nightlife in Winneba, is superb, like 100% fun. And everybody is ready to have fun, to party. None of them were like sitting down, being idle. Everybody was up, you know, on his feet, dancing, making fun and all that. So when you come to Winneba, make sure you check out the fun part in the evening. Yes, yeah, so in a nutshell, I would say that my time in Winneba, three days in Winneba, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was awesome. I've already given you a review of what I think happened here, or my experiences here. Kokora, come. Yeah, in the morning in Ghana, there's this common food that everybody eats. It's called koko. Koko is porridge. So, okay, let me help you. What's the name? You guys will take, right? So that you saw is cocoa. Cocoa is made of, um, I think, millet. And usually, every Ghanaian likes cocoa. In the morning, you find some around the community. After every five minutes work, you find someone selling cocoa, mostly by the um, Muslims, yes. But when I was speaking to her, she said she's a Christian, and she also sells cocoa. But, you know, the mindset for 
those who sell cocoa are the Muslims especially. So my stay, three days stay in Winneba has been a beautiful one. There are definitely good things that we have to speak about uh, Winneba. We've already mentioned, you know, tourism, the deliberate attempt to improve in their tourism, uh, domestic tourism, which will bring a lot of people here. We've also talked about their road network. Most of the roads are one way. Yes, you can use, you, you wouldn't find a road with two cars coming from the other side, right? And then we've also talked about their culture, how beautiful they are with people, their lifestyle. They're always welcoming, always ready to, you know, show you around to, you know, teach you what you don't know. We've also talked about their food. The food system is, that is a little bit dicey because like I said, if, if you catch fish in your hometown, then fish shouldn't be expensive. When you go to Kumasi, they don't have a sea. So them coming here to buy and then send it there and it's so expensive, then I would understand because that person would have to, you know, add up the transportation costs and everything. But here, the, the sea is just by, you know, just five minutes away from me. So when you catch a fish here and it's expensive and I think it's a no-no. And then the other meal, apart from the fish, is also a bit expensive. Uh, to, I am saying this, you know, as a random traveler, that I think that certain foodstuffs that are made here in Ghana, especially in that community, shouldn't be that expensive. And then I also talked about the nightlife. There are a lot of places for you to go and have fun. And also, there are ladies. When you call the ladies, because you're a visitor, they are scared to come close to you. Why are you saying that, hey, Eko, why are you talking about ladies? I'm a man. Even if I'm married, I will still have to call a lady and say, hello, lady, how are you? Can we have a drink? So that she can tell me a bit about Winneba and if we to, to be precise. Hi, my name is Richard and I'm part of a Corsum Sims team. Well, coming from Cape Coast, we've been here for three days. And I'm, I'm going to talk about the nightlife. Ah, since from Friday, Saturday, yesterday, we really have fun. Anybody who is planning to come to Winneba, especially for the nightlife, I'm telling you, you have a lot to experience. All right, so my name is Prince Osei Jainfi and I'm also part of Echo Simpsons team. Um, coming to Winneba and celebrating their festival with them, I, my experience is, um, I'm going to talk about the security here. You know, uh, I think the Abuachi Festival is the most protected festival in Ghana. I'm yet to experience the rest, but I think the security did a very great job. The policemen were all over the, the place, making sure that people were not flouting rules and regulations. People were not using rules that they were not supposed to use. People were not manhandling people. I mean, you know, more visitors came in and then they had town folks assisting them to do stuff. So the police here was trying to make sure that everything was on point. So I think I will commend the, po the police and the other security agencies for a good work done. So hey, thank you very much for checking me out. We're bringing you more of these within the central region of Ghana, discovering and exploring